Донецкой Народной Республики и Луганской Народной Республики к России с просьбой признания их суверенитета и постановления Государственной Думы Российской Федерации на эту же тему. С призывом к главе государства сделать это и признать независимость и суверенитет Донецкой Народной Республики и Луганской Народной Республики. Хочу вместе с ним отметить, что эти вопросы, безусловно, очень тесно связаны. Это разные вопросы, но они, тем не менее, очень тесно связаны с глобальными проблемами обеспечения безопасности в мире вообще и на европейском континенте в частности. Потому что использование Украины как инструмента противостояния с нашей стороной, с Россией, представляет, конечно, для нас серьезную, очень большую угрозу. Именно поэтому мы в последние месяцы, в конце прошлого года, активизировали свою работу с нашими основными партнерами в Вашингтоне и в НАТО, для того, чтобы договориться, в конце концов, о этих мерах безопасности и обеспечить спокойное, благополучное развитие страны в мирных условиях. Для нас это задача номер один. Это приоритет для нашей страны. Не конфронтация, а обеспечение безопасности и условий для развития. Но мы, конечно, должны понимать реалии, в которых мы живем. И, как я уже неоднократно говорил, если Россия, будет, если Россия столкнется с такой угрозой, как принятие Украины в Североатлантический альянс, в НАТО, то угрозы для нашей страны многократно возрастут. Потому что есть статья 5 договора о создании НАТО, в которой, из которой ясно, что все страны Альянса должны воевать на стороне одного из своих членов, если он подвергается какой-то агрессии. Но поскольку никто не признает волеизъявление крымчан и севастопольцев, Украина настаивает на том, что это ее территория, у нас возникает реальная угроза, что они начнут отвоевывать эту как они считают свою территорию, военным способом. А они говорят об этом в своих документах, пишут. Это очевидно. Мы слушаем президента Владимира Путина, который проводит конференцию безопасности и Amid the rising Ukraine-Russia tensions, uh, Vladimir Putin saying the agenda for today's meeting is uh, the future measures that have to be taken. The Russian president addressing the Security Council in Moscow saying Russia has done all that it could to use peaceful tools to minimize the differences despite the attentions that have been on the rise. Russia has uh, done all that it could to use the peaceful tools despite the differences. During the negotiations, he says that they have come up with the plan to resolve the situation. The Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov earlier said that the meeting was not a regular one and the issues to be discussed in the meeting were not clarified by the spokesperson. The Russian president at this point in time uh, addressing the Security Council meeting saying all these are different matters but closely related to security in the world, especially Europe, using Ukraine as a tool of confrontation is a big threat and that is why uh, we escalated to Washington to work a solution out, but we need to understand the realities. And if Ukraine is going to join the NATO, the threat is going to increase tenfold. А потом попрошу э, казака Дмитрия Николаевича, я попросил его прийти, он здесь, да, он здесь, ну, вот, э, сделать сообщение о э, его оценках того, что происходит на переговорном треке по исполнению Минских соглашений. Потом дам слово каждому из вас, но в конечном итоге мы должны с вами решить, что мы дальше будем делать и как мы должны поступать исходя из той ситуации, которая складывается на сегодняшний день, и исходя из наших оценок и ее развития. Пожалуйста, Сергей Викторович. Уважаемый Владимир Владимирович, уважаемые коллеги, как я докладывал президенту неделю назад, мы подготовили оценку тех предложений по 
гарантиям безопасности, о которых Россия выдвинула соответствующие инициативы перед США и НАТО в декабре прошлого года, в конце января получили реакцию. Оценка этой реакции показывает, что наши западные коллеги не готовы воспринимать наши центральные предложения, Just to take it through some of the key takeaways from that address that's just been delivered by the Russian president. He was uh, addressing the meeting of the Security Council amid the rising Russia-Ukraine tensions, uh, where he has said that some countries, uh, NATO members, are against Ukraine joining the NATO. Uh, but despite that, they were told that there is pressure from the U.S. That's uh, one uh, crucial statement coming in from the Russian president. As the uncertainty continues to grow over the Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, Radwi Putin saying that the U.S. can renounce any agreement as, uh, as the pressure from the U.S. has continued. Uh, all these are different matters but closely related to security in the world, especially Europe, and using Ukraine as a tool of confrontation is a big threat, and that is why we uh, escalated to Washington to work a solution out, but we need to understand the realities and if Ukraine is going to join the NATO, the threat is going to increase tenfold. And uh, that was uh, the statement that was given out by the Russian president as he handed over uh, the uh, podium to, uh, the, uh, to the foreign minister. So just to summarize for you what the Russian president has said in that address to the Security Council, the Russian president saying that if Ukraine is going to join the NATO, the threat is going to increase tenfold. Also saying that NATO members, some countries, are against Ukraine joining NATO, but despite that, they have been told that there is pressure from the U.S., which means that the U.S. can renounce any agreement. Задача выстраивать партнерство стратегического характера в том числе. Мы предложили вернуться на восточном фланге НАТО к конфигурации сил Альянса к состоянию на 1997 год. Этот аргумент наш был отвергнут, как и первый. И причем нас тут же призвали в ответах натовцев прекратить оккупацию Крыма, вывести войска с территории Грузии, Молдавии и Украины. По Украине в целом выражена в этих документах поддержка Минскому комплексу мер, но в абсолютно таком стерильном ключе, без какой-либо готовности заставить Киев, добиться от Киева выполнять положение этого важнейшего документа. Ну и в ответ на наши другие требования, включая необходимость исключить развертывание представляющих нам угрозу систем вооружений вблизи российских рубежей, американцы обозначили настрой начать обсуждение проблемы ракет средней и меньшей дальности наземного базирования. Эта проблема возникла после того, как Соединенные Штаты в одностороннем порядке вышли из договора, соответствующего с Российской Федерацией, и проигнорировали ваши, Владимир Владимирович, инициативы еще двухлетней давности, когда вы предложили взамен этого договора хотя бы объявить взаимный мораторий на развертывание таких систем с соответствующими мерами верификации. Среди других идей, которые США и НАТО передали нам, это работа по некоторым аспектам уменьшения военных рисков, повышению транспарентности и предсказуемости. Они на самом деле близки к нашим предложениям, которые мы неоднократно выдвигали в последние годы как перед американцами, так и перед натовцами. Но эти темы, они вырваны, выведены из контекста пакетного соглашения по гарантиям безопасности. И в части двусторонних США шагов они также ведут речь о регламентации полетов стратегических бомбардировщиков, о доработке мер по предотвращению инцидентов на море и воздушном пространстве над ним. Ну и особое внимание уделяют транспарентности внезапных проверок, установлению, возобновлению контактов между военными, созданию гражданской телефонной горячей линии, ну и обсуждению механизмов предотвращения опасных военных инцидентов. В целом наше общее впечатление, что коллеги пытаются, так сказать, раскассировать российские предложения, выделить из них отдельные 
второстепенные, хотя и важные для нас моменты, которые способствовали бы поддержанию диалога и снижению рисков, но не затрагивали бы коренные интересы США и их союзников в вопросах безоглядного расширения НАТО, не затрагивали бы их свободы в определении конфигурации сил на НАТОвском пространстве и на оборудовательском and that the pressure is coming in from the United States. Uh, the Russian foreign minister now uh, taking the podium and saying that uh, in response to other demands, including deploying uh, threatening weapon systems, they were ready to discuss the short-term and medium-range weapons as well. The Russian president just a short while back has said that Russia is considering the request to recognize the Ukraine separatists as well. That's a crucial statement coming in as the Russian leader addresses the Security Council meeting in Moscow. Sergei Lavrov saying that the West referred to open-door diplomacy both in NATO and U.S. response and they are just uh, taking out one element. Uh, choosing alliance is a country's sovereign right but are not including the fact that it cannot be done at the security concerns as, as per the security concerns of any other country. Sergei Lavrov adding that other ideas to work on decreasing the deployments that Russia has reiterated before as well. Overall, uh, that their counterparts are fragmenting matters to single out issues that suit them. Каждый западник э, провозглашал абсолютную приверженность единой позиции. Единую позицию вырабатывают Соединенные Штаты, поэтому Мюнхен просто подтвердил, что говорить нужно с Вашингтоном. И э, именно этим мы сейчас занимаемся, направив одобренный вами э, ответ на э, американский документ. В этом документе мы подчеркнули главное, что наши предложения не являются э, чем-то, вроде меню, из которого можно выбирать, они, и, они не являются ультиматумом, просто они опираются на абсолютно очевидную вещь, что ситуация в мире может быть решена только комплексно на данном этапе. Вы, Владимир Ильич, подчеркнули, что и украинский кризис во многом зависит от того, как развиваются отношения между Российской Федерацией и ведомым, ведомым с Соединенными Штатами Западом. И поэтому мы в нашем ответе подчеркнули целостность изначальной российской инициативы, готовы обсуждать и те вопросы, которые американцы э, вспомнили, о которых американцы вспомнили, в том числе с учетом наших прежних идей, э, но делать это мы будем исключительно добиваясь ответа на главные Вопросы, которые нас беспокоят. Прекращение расширения НАТО на восток и рассмотрение конфигурации НАТОвского присутствия на европейском континенте, прежде всего в Центральной и Восточной Европе, с учетом того, о чем договаривались в рамках Россия-НАТО. И, конечно же, наш, наш призыв, не призыв, а в общем-то требование, по большому счету, объяснить, Почему подписанное на высшем уровне заверение о том, что никто не будет укреплять свою безопасность за счет безопасности других, сейчас не просто игнорируется, но наши коллеги из соответствующих стран даже отказываются объяснить, что же они имели в виду, когда их лидеры подписывали соответствующие документы, и почему сейчас... Независимо от того, что они имели в виду, они не собираются The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov addressing the Security Council meeting in Moscow, saying that in response to other demands, including deploying threat threatening weapon systems, they were ready to discuss the short-term and medium-range weapons and other ideas to work on decreasing deployments that Russia has reiterated before as well. And overall, their counterparts are fragmenting matters to single out issues that suit them. Summing up the response that they have got, uh, the Russian minister saying that there is small progress and we re reacted to the document which came from the NATO and the US. Our proposals are not like a menu that you can choose items from.
On that note, let's uh, get in uh, perspectives from Russian affairs expert Fred Vier, who's uh, with us on the broadcast from Moscow. Hi, Fred. Uh, we're listening into the remarks being made by the Russian president and uh, the Russian foreign minister uh, as a part of that Security Council meeting in Moscow. A crucial takeaway uh, is uh, uh, Sergei Lavrov saying that Russia's proposals are not like menus that you can choose items from, uh, clearly lashing out at the West when it comes to the response that Moscow received. Uh, if you can elaborate for us and just to set things straight, uh, what Russia's response has been and what you make of the claims that have been made by the Russian president right now. Well, first of all, um, it's important to note that that does not sound like the speech of a foreign minister of a country that's about to go to war. Hmm. Um, the, uh, I, I cannot explain the, the really electric atmosphere, um, the information war that's going on, the constant reiterations of imminent invasion. I, I just don't get it. But that is, is not an appeal um, that even sounds last minute. It's important to know that the diplomatic process is going on. It, it continues, and, and uh, Joe Biden even said yesterday he might be prepared to have a summit meeting with Vladimir Putin, which would be a really good thing, um, diplomatic track thing. Uh, so the, the basic, to answer your question, the basic uh, Russian demand, and, and you just heard Lavrov say that, the main thing they want is guarantees that NATO the uh, Atlantic Alliance will not expand any further to the east into the Soviet, former Soviet region. Um, it is important to remember that in the past 25 years, NATO has expanded. It, it's taken in every single former Warsaw Pact country and three former Soviet republics. It's basically marched a thousand kilometers to the east and the Russians um, However, whatever we think of their methods right now, mobilizing troops and, and making threats and so on, um, they are clearly drawing a line at Ukraine and saying no, and they want guarantees, like legal guarantees, perhaps treaty-bound guarantees, that there will be no more NATO expansion. That's what it's all about for them. Right. What is your assessment of the Russian strategy at this point overall? Well, I think it's to keep the pot boiling. Uh, um, I'm afraid, like of events that are going on there in the Donbass, that things can get out of hand. Uh, you've got a lot of actors down there who are not under government control on both sides. Um, it's it's really dangerous, and uh, uh, we we listen to the OSCE observers who are left there, uh, and they are recording like doubling every day of uh, ceasefire violations, that is shelling and, and bombing incidents. So uh, it is bad, it is very dangerous, um, and it is hard to know how that fits into the Russian strategy. I suspect it is uh, the strategy of those rebel republics who are trying to draw Russia in closer, just as Ukraine is appealing to the West and trying to draw the West closer on its side. You have this geopolitical aspect being manipulated by um, small time actors, but they have a lot of ability to really cause disruptions and, and, and even provoke war in this in this situation. Right. Uh, Fred, a Russian military has also claimed that the Ukrainian combat vehicles that cross the border with Russia have been eliminated. Uh, Ukraine has called this fake news. Uh, Russia also says that five members of the Ukrainian sabotage group were killed during these clashes. What do you make of that? I don't know. Um, there's all kinds of talk of false flags, and that may be happening. I think you have to assume that it could be happening on both sides. Um, I do not find, and I, I've been doing this for a long time, I do not find the Ukrainians more truthful than the Russians. Uh, there is a lot of disinformation swirling around, and it's not just coming from one source. Uh, but I, I think it's clear that outright war has not begun. Uh, whatever these things are, they're baffling, they're dangerous, uh, but they do not signal all-out war, not yet.
if that summit between Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden does come through, uh, how optimistic are you about that uh, discussion? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic in the long term. Um, I, I know that this is a very tense time, um, but Russia has, has some reasonable demands. They're, they also have some unreasonable ones, and they're going about it in a very dangerous, reckless way. But um, there is a possibility to end this uh, standoff diplomatically. Um, it would have to involve uh, creating a neutral, uh, maybe not just Ukraine, but a belt of neutral countries like Georgia, Ukraine, maybe even Belarus, between Russia and NATO in order to stabilize the uh, European security order. That's not impossible, uh, but it, it is a big jump for both of those countries, for Putin and Biden, to get to that place where they're prepared to, to uh, agree to, to something like that. Um, but I, I, I hope that they will. What do you make of the tone and tenor of the Russian president at this point, given the uncertainty that's uh, been escalating and the counterclaims that have been coming in from Kiev? Well, yeah, as I said, um, I, it, it doesn't sound like people who are on the verge of war, that, that who think that this is, this is the jumping off point and, and we've got no place to go now except to, to make war. It, it does not have that tone to it, um, and that's hopeful. It doesn't mean that we won't have war tomorrow. These are just such trying times, you know, um, and nobody knows what people are planning under the carpet. As I said, many uh, private actors are involved, and uh, the uncertainty is just, I don't know about you, but it, it's practically killing me. Right, Stephen B. Freer, just uh, a quick roundup for our viewers who might just be tuning in. We have been getting you the key takeaways coming in from the Security Council meeting in Moscow, uh, where the Russian President Vladimir Putin has uh, spoken once again about the uh, Moscow uh, reiteration of uh, the of the statements that have been coming in regarding Ukraine wanting to join the NATO, summing up the response that uh, the Russia has got, Sergei Lavrov saying that there is some progress. We reacted to the document which came from the NATO and US, and our proposals are not like a menu that you can choose items from. The Russian president, uh, just a short while back, as a part of that meeting, saying that Russia is considering the request to recognize the Ukraine separatists, also saying that some countries, NATO members, are against Ukraine joining the NATO, but despite that, they have been told that there is pressure from the U.S., uh, which means that the U.S. can renounce any agreement. Talking about the deployment, uh, the Russian deployment as well, all these are different matters, but closely related to security in the world, especially Europe. Using Ukraine as a tool of confrontation is a big threat. That is why we escalated to Washington to work a solution out, is what the Russian president had said. But we need to understand the realities. If Ukraine is going to join the NATO, the threat is going to increase tenfold. Fred Weir, this is a reiteration of what the Russian president has said earlier on as well. Uh, but there is a marked difference in the way that uh, the Russian leader seems to be assessing the threat coming in uh, if Ukraine wanting to join the NATO and those discussions go anywhere forward? Well, Ukraine isn't going to join NATO anytime soon and probably yes. never. Yes. That is, I mean, it's just obvious. It's, it's about the principle of the thing. The Russians want the West to renounce the idea of expanding NATO to the East because they remember in the 1990s when they were very weak and couldn't do anything about it, these first waves of NATO expansion took place. Um, they don't know what things will be like in 10 years from now. So they don't want to be uh, in the position ever again of facing a, a neighbor of theirs joining uh, what they regard as a hostile military alliance. That is their key demand. And I'm pretty sure that if the Americans took that from their proposals, you know, just took it from like from a menu and agreed to stop NATO expansion, the Russians would find that very acceptable.
The Russian president also says that uh, Russia needs to consider recognition of the two breakaway Ukrainian regions. Uh, this is something that uh, the president has said earlier on as well. Uh, but what do you make of that reiteration time and again and the message that the Russian president is trying to send across? across? Well, his, uh, his, his basic message is that there, there are probably many ways to solve this uh, without war. Um, the, the war is being threatened and, and it has to, everybody has to note that the Russians are doing this. They, they did start it in terms of military concentrations near the border. They did it uh, probably in order to provoke the West into holding this diplomatic process. They succeeded, uh, but now it's going on and it's difficult and it's many-sided. And their message to Ukraine is that you, Ukrainians, could solve it too. Um, you, you could solve it by implementing the Minsk II agreement, which basically the basic problem, the reason the Ukrainians don't want to, is it involves talking directly with the separatist leaders in the East, uh, acknowledging uh, special status for those two uh, separatist republics, and granting amnesty to everyone who rebelled against Ukrainian authority. These are things that are just like a poison pill in Kiev. Um, but if Ukraine were to do that, um, the Russians would, I think, be satisfied with whatever would be the outcome of their discussions with the Americans. Um, short of that, they, they, they want this American uh, resolution against any further NATO expansion. Right. Uh, Freya, Fred, let's also talk about uh, the Russian claims when it comes to uh, the drills that have been held, saying that the plan all along was to uh, return the troops and there were no plans of invasion. If that was the case, what do you think Russia has achieved so far? Well, they, they kept the diplomatic process going by keeping the pot boiling. Like they have these rotating exercises on the Ukrainian border. They are definitely doing that. Uh, and just they are also doing it in Belarus. They were supposed to conclude those those really massive uh, military exercises in Belarus yesterday, and they extended them, which is a bad sign. But uh, again, it's it's the diplomatic process is still going on, and the Russians want to keep the pressure on. Um, there doesn't seem to be any sign that they're going to invade Ukraine, uh, no matter what the American president says over and over again that just, you know, the, the amounts of, of force that the Russians have concentrated on the border is is not sufficient uh, to invade Ukraine. And even Ukrainian security experts are saying that, um, you know, that's whatever it is, 150,000 Russian troops uh, along that border, um, that's half the size of the Ukrainian army. Um, it's it's certainly enough to invade parts of Ukraine to seize maybe a city or two, but it is not enough for a blitzkrieg style invasion of Ukraine. So one must assume that these exercises that they keep holding and they, they pull back a bit and then they start new ones, uh, um, that this is all part of their diplomatic strategy. It's, it's military theater a very, as I said, very dangerous and reckless kind, but uh, so far it isn't, uh, doesn't look to be pre preparations for an actual invasion. Fred, we appreciate very much for joining us on the broadcast and sharing those perspectives.